come to a quiet place like this, we like to think that our minds will settle down right away. There's nothing outside to disturb us. But the problem is we come with our karmic baggage, habits of mind that we can see in the present moment, and also old karma that we can't see where it's coming from, but it comes up. Old karma in this lifetime, old karma from previous lifetimes. After all, we are in the human realm. This is a realm where people come when they have mixed karma, both good and bad. So we can't be surprised when the bad karma comes up. You can call them karma storms. You sit down and all of a sudden you're assailed by all kinds of thoughts. I had a student one time who for years wanted to go out in the forest and be alone. And so finally, after a couple of years, he managed it. And for the first couple of months out in the forest, his mind was a total mess. And realized that part of it, dealing with that, was going to be learning an attitude of patience. He said, this may be a part of me I don't want to work on, but it looks like it's the one I have to work on. So you learn some patience, you learn some endurance. So endurance doesn't mean just putting up with things. It means finding something to do in the meantime, both in terms of finding some source of pleasure inside, some place, and remembering anything that's coming up in the mind over which you have no control. That's past karma. And this is what the result of past bad karma is like. You want to keep on creating more of that. So you figure out what good karma you can do in the meantime. It can be little things about being more generous, being stricter with yourself about the precepts, or figuring out something to do with your mind in the meantime, having some place to hold on. Think of a storm coming through. You have to find a place to hide out. You can't go outside until the storm has passed, like those explorers in Antarctica. They get in their tents and a big storm blows up. They can't go outside. They got to stay inside, even though they wanted to walk how many miles that particular day. It wasn't going to happen. So they found the best shelter they could find, and they just stayed there, hid out. That's part of what you got to do. But part of it is learning how to think in positive ways. What good things can you do right now? And an important thing is just learning how to have the right attitude. In my own case, I got to what Thomas I did, got to practice with John Fu. Finally got up onto the mountain behind the monastery. I was all, all alone in the mountain. And all of a sudden, thoughts of my childhood, thoughts of my teenage years, thoughts of my college years just came and assailed the mind. And thinking about it in terms of karma really helped, both in terms of analyzing the issues from the past in terms of karma. It helped to depersonalize a lot of the issues. A lot of the cases where I felt I had been a victim of unfair treatment. So who knows? Karma is not keeping score only in this lifetime. In fact, there's no beginning to the keeping of scores. There's no place where you can trace back and say, well, this person was the first to set things in motion, or this person responded in an excessive way. When there's no beginning point, the score becomes meaningless. And it helps to depersonalize things. It takes a lot of the sting out of things that you're thinking about. But also you look in terms of the karma of the present moment. What are you doing right now? What good things can you do right now? You may not be able to do what you want with your mind. You read about all the stages of concentration. You'd like to try out the first jhana, second jhana, third, fourth, up through the foremost ones. And you have trouble staying with the breath at all. Well, find a theme that you can stay with. If you can't be with the whole body, find one little part of the body. And think about your mind as being a 
like a committee. There are lots of members in there, and maybe some of the members are totally out of control. The whole meeting of the committee is in chaos. Or find one member of the committee that you can identify with, that you feel safe identifying with, and see what you can do with that member. The Buddha's advice is when you try to direct your mind to a topic that you want to think about and it won't stay there, you think about the drawbacks of going with whatever the thoughts are that are pulling you away. And that doesn't work. The next one is simply to say, okay, those things are there, but I'm not going to pay attention to them. That requires that you have some little corner where you can go. You can hide out. And wait till the storm blows over. And this principle applies in meditation, applies in life in general. You're minding your own business, living a perfectly decent life, and all of a sudden something comes up and hits you upside the head, karmically. You have to keep reminding yourself. The fact that you've done bad things in the past doesn't mean you're a bad person now. A lot of people are embarrassed or, to think about the fact that they may have committed some pretty bad karma in the past. But we're all in that boat, assuming that some people's karma is showing now and other people's is going to show later, because you can't look into your karmic account and figure out what the running balance is. Or when good things are going to come, when bad things are going to come. The Buddha's image is more like a field. You plant seeds, and some seeds sprout quickly, some seeds sprout slowly. What you're seeing right now are the seeds that are sprouting right now. But you don't know what else you have in that field. You don't know what else everybody else has in their fields. So try to depersonalize the issue. And remember that patience is a virtue, endurance is a virtue. Our society doesn't encourage much of it. We want things to go well right now. But sometimes there are obstacles. And that's the case with any obstacle. There are those that are quick. You can see what the problem is, you can get around it. Others take a lot of time. You have to figure out some way to make yourself equal to the task. That's why the Buddha gives us images of goodwill and patience as being so large, large like the earth, large like the river Ganges. Bigger than whatever disturbances there may be. So when a bad karmic storm comes whipping up, remind yourself you've been through worse. After all, the human realm is one of the better realms to be born into. We've all been through the lower realms, but here we are, we've survived. The question is how to survive with as much good karma as you can. Don't let the fact that old bad karma is showing itself be an excuse to create some more bad karma. It should be your signal that okay, this is what bad karma is like when it shows its results. You don't want it. So do what good karma you can in the meantime. That includes developing qualities like patience, but also looking around see what other opportunities there are to do something good. Lift your spirits. Learn how to give yourself a pep talk, as I said. You've been through worse. You can take this. And you have the right attitude. Working on patience when patience is what's called for. You can come out unscathed. 